keynote, and then we'll continue the conversation. Thank you, organizers, my colleagues, and all of you in your various capacities. Uh, my name is Betty Amongi. I'm the Minister of Gender, Labor, and Social Development. I'm uh, honored to be speaking today on this uh, very important uh, topic as investment, industrialization, and urban development. First to say, investments have been covered by my colleagues and the PSST. I just need to notify you that beyond Kampala, that the ED is here, Uganda has 10 cities. The 10 cities uh, have gazetted industrial parks that you can invest in. We also have a policy that we passed in cabinet just two weeks ago on incentive for investment in the cities in, re in respect to garbage and uh, the Minister of Energy has incentives for those who want to transform garbage into, into uh, electricity and other products. We have free zones that I think um, has been indicated to you and other incentives, but I think if you want to invest, labor is very critical in Uganda. We have the most youngest the most youngest country, 80% of the population is below 35 years. Those between 18 to 35 years are about 26.7%. We've invested greatly in skilling the labor, skilling the youth. We have the ICT hubs, innovation hubs and funds startup funds and all those that have skilled the labor. And uh, so if you want to come and invest in Uganda, I can assure you that you will have the right labor to support your investment. We also have policies that can support you bring experts, but there are certain jobs that are ring-fenced for Ugandans. We, under the ministry, under labor, we also have uh, a social development fund that is National Social Development Fund, which is one of the biggest funds in the country and has greatly invested in real estate and it has won the best African real estate investment. And I want to just pause and request that they play one of the real estate portfolio for NSSF under Solana.
as, we, as you think about investing in Uganda, we appreciate uh, those who will come also to co-invest with us under NSSF. I'm glad that PSST seated there is a board member of NSSF and uh, it has a portfolio now of six billion US dollars. It buys, it is in bonds, in securities, but also supporting the startups uh, in many sectors in the economy, fintech, IT, real estate, and all those other areas that you can come and invest in. We know there are many diaspora here in the UK, and in the diaspora, we invite you with a new law we now have under NSSF, you can save voluntarily. And if you are thinking of investing back home, you can co-invest, but also you can open your voluntary accounts under NSSF. And it's uh, very easy to open that account. That account gives you return. When you invest your money first, it's secured because it's a government provident fund. But also when you invest under voluntary, you get your interest, you don't need to be running around. Most of you in the diaspora, you are investing in real estate, you're buying homes, and sometimes you're being conned by people, uh, even relatives, you send money to build houses and the houses are not there. So this is an opportunity where you can invest with NSSF to, give you, to build for you a personalized homes for yourself while you live abroad. The diaspora remit one, about 1 1.4 uh, billion US dollars in our economy, so we want to support you because under my ministry, we also deal with the externalization of labor. I've already met a lot of people here who also want Ugandan labor here in the United Kingdom, uh, especially caregivers and others that we are looking at avenues. So if you are also and uh, a company here and you need labor from Uganda, uh, we have a robust program for externalizing labor abroad, skilled labor, and we have a digitalized system of uh, bringing labor to all the countries globally. So I want to uh, indicate that uh, as a Ugandan economy, there is inclusiveness where women and girls are supported to also be in business, to also invest. And I think MasterCard has uh, indicated that Uganda is the most entrepreneurial in terms of women owning business at 44% of women owned businesses. So I don't see many women in this room. I don't know how the UK is. But I can assure you that when you come to Uganda, you will get skilled labor and you will get many women who are top notch. And I think you will see here many women will come to speak on, in very many areas. Uh, I think the, the ED of, uh, of uh, Uganda Airlines is here. The one for tourism is here. You have seen Nakalema is there. Uh, aiding the president's desk. And so I am proud that at the top-notch technical level, women constitute 50% of the appointments and aiding institutions in Uganda. So inclusiveness is very important in business, and I want to conclude by saying we will continue to develop robust uh, labor that supports the industrialization process the urbanization process, because a lot of the people who come to the urban areas are the youth. They are people seeking for jobs. And I think our job um, uh, ratio now is improving with many of the youth, very innovative, and uh, we welcome you to Uganda and hope that uh, when you, you make a choice to invest in Uganda, the critical element of labor will be waiting for you to support your investment.
I think the, if you want to book a home, you want to come and invest, don't fear that you are not going to have the most exotic place to live. This is an award-winning uh, area built by NSSF, which is a social security fund in Uganda. And I'm glad last year when we came, we showed this uh, great uh, investment and we already have about seven people from last year who have gone and bought the building, including our convener, Willie, who has already invested and bought with three other people who are in this room. So please, if you are coming to invest, also if you want a home in Uganda, please contact NSSF. We have a desk out. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I um, just want to ask the minister a question. In fact, it's a question that I want to ask the previous speaker. Um, several times you mentioned, not you, but that um, Ugandan uh, diaspora remittance is one point is something uh, billion. Um, so my question to you is, uh, uh, we said in Africa, charity begins at home. So uh, what incentive are you offering to this uh, Ugandan diaspora to invest back home. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, uh, I like the, the question from, from Robert, and I, I will probably add on this. There's a point of what we call collective responsibility. So on, on besides what should the government do, there's a lot of what we should be doing. And we're doing a lot of that. We're doing a lot of that, and uh, but let me just, Pass it on to, I'll start off with the Honorable Minister, just to respond to that. Sure. One, I'm, I'm going to come back. For one, killing the youth, which um, uh, government finance programs, uh, they are skilling on job placements, uh, where we place youth in corporate bodies in most of the investment companies and they are skilled on job and most times the youth are retained by those companies. So that's one of the skilling. We also have cheap capital for youth to start their businesses as entrepreneurs. Uh, in banks you will get uh, capital of about 24% per annum but most of the financing we give to our youth is about 10, between 6 to 10 percent for youth who would want to start their own businesses. So those are some of the areas where we are handling the youth. But we also have a lot of uh, vocational training right uh, into uh, villages and, and sub-counties uh, that are financed. We even have a World Bank program that is supporting the skilling of the youth through BITVED, that is business, uh, technical, and vocational education that transition the youth into the world of work. And if you look at the statistics, the youth in Uganda are one of the most entrepreneurial and the women. Then the second question was about um, incentive for the diaspora. The same incentive that was uh, explained by PSST and our, our uh, deputy speaker is for the diaspora who wants to invest. When you want to invest, you will be supported to uh, establish, first we have industrial parks where you can have free land given to you. Two, we have uh, programs of uh, uh, giving you incentive, tax-free. If you are in business like uh, tourism and service industry, you can get those uh, loans, but also tax-free and importation of materials to construct the, the uh, businesses or establish the businesses. So the same incentive that you will get for anybody who wants to invest in Uganda, we also... Uh, provide those for our uh, our diaspora Ugandans. Thank you. Minister, allow me to add on, you forgot uh, my PSFU hat now comes on. We are also, through World Bank and the assistance of government through the Ministry of Finance, we're running projects up to, I think, 400 million 
between yes, 400 million US dollars between yes. private sector and government for youth and women. So there's a lot going on in that space. Protocol do you observe? Uh, my name is Michael Oluku from Zycon Consulting. In terms of my question, the question I have for our Honorable Minister, I can see that Uganda, I haven't been to Uganda, but it's a place I'm so eager to want to visit. And, but from the little I've learned here today and from other conversation, the Buddha Buddha is, is, looks like a, a, a very huge challenge, but opportunity. And I see that um, the, the reason why we have so many Buddha Buddha is because there is a knowledge gap within the, the low skill workers the, who, are, who end up in Buddha Buddha and things like that. And, but my question is, how well are you also preparing the youths in terms of fitting into the rapid development and infrastructure development? Take for example, the oil and gas industry is developing. You have hydropower being developed, you have infrastructure being developed. How well are you planning in terms of the educational system to fit in the Buddha Buddha rider into this new advanced development that is going on in Uganda. In terms of the educational institution, are they well prepared? Because we know that human resources and science and technology are key to the development of a nation. How are we preparing the youths, the Buddha Buddha riders, to fit into this system? How prepared are the educational institution? How well equipped are they? You talked about um, um, the vocational training. In terms of, let's say, for example, power infrastructure, how well are they being trained in terms of um, power transmission technology and running the power plants, or in terms of industrialization, training them on mechatronics engineering and things like that to fit into that new um, Uganda that we are looking forward to? Thank you. Um, I think that's the last question before I take it back to the, the panel. And before we close, but I, I, I will touch Boda Boda because I'm passionate on Boda Boda. I actually invested in 200 Boda Bodas over the last two years just to understand that ecosystem. And they're brilliant young people, very educated. And the ecosystem actually is in the process of, of, of actually happening. So there is, you will not go in a room like this in Uganda and ask somebody, who, you, you ask a question, who doesn't have a Boda person? Literally every single person will raise their hand because the convenience, this is somebody who you, so there is a level of convenience, but you're right, pointed, they're part of that growing population, and they actually represent about 5 to 7 percent of GDP, which is not yet structured, but the process of structuring that. But let me pass on to the Honorable Minister, then I'll just walk through for final words and comments for more of my panelists. A bit a minute each, and then we'll close the session. Thank you, Honorable. Um, I do not want people to look at the border border as, um, as something that has not worked for the youth. Uh, in Uganda, we now have border borders that are online. So the way you order Uber is the way you can order border border and a safe border. Some of us, the politicians, when you are late and you're going for a talk show, a television, something, you will jump out of your car and ride with a border border. During COVID period, we survived because of border border. We had to design online application for delivery of food, both food that are shopped in the market, delivered by border borders, and these days, most of the Ugandans you're seeing here will have a meal, maybe a Saturday, Sunday meal at home, delivered by the border borders. So the border border is transitioning into a fintech industry in the country. So while we, some people want to look at it as something. What we are trying to do now is uh, how do we ensure it is secured and the security is one, online, border border, two, uh, the government has uh, uh, passed a cabinet decision to ensure that we will digitalize the number plates of all the border borders. 
we've started with the vehicles and border borders will come in, but there's also um, a decision to create a central business district area which is not accessible by the border border and then we, we ensure that they have um, designated security vetted um, places where they are staged for purpose of ensuring that uh, there is security when you use border border. So all that KCC is working on it. So I don't want you to look at border border. It's what I think it's even a tourist attraction <laughs> that uh, CNI profiled it that uh, most uh, people who tourists who visit Uganda will try to make sure that they're in a border border and record and post it. So on the overall uh, scaling for the youth and education system, I already indicated the BitVet uh, programming, the other aspect which, which we are undertaking, and I think the rest of the issues we can, we can discuss uh, as we, one we one have on a one-on-one, one on one, but uh, we are moving uh, forward in ensuring that the youth are skilled, the youth are employed, and also in the mining sector, we have reserved certain services for women and youth. If you talk to our one-on-one -on, -one on the artisan miners, you'll find women and youth are being given specific program to support them and skill them into the artisan mining in the country and all the other sectors in construction, there are certain areas that we support the youth to ensure that they are reserved for the youth and women. Thank you.